What's up guys, it's KD with 3D Printing and Technology. So for today's video, we're going to be doing the final review of the Tebo Tornado 3D Printer. We're still going to be doing the Tebo versus different printer review type video later on, but this is the final one for the Tebo by itself. So the Tebo Tornado is a large format 3D printer. It's most often comparable with the Creality CR10. The dimensions of this printer is 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters, which is a big printer for the home user slash hobbyist. This printer is mostly made up of aluminum extrusions as the frame and a standalone control box with a cord going to the printer and to the power output or input. But I'm sure you can buy these printers pre-assembled. But the one we have is a pre-assembled kit type printer. You have to get the Y axis out of the box and then screw the 2Z axis, two Z axis columns into the Y axis and with four screws and then put the reinforcement plates onto it. And that's pretty much all you have to do to assemble this printer besides the bed calibration of course. Overall the instructions for this printer is fairly easy to understand. It did seem like it was missing the bed setup calibration instructions but if you've done a printer set before it shouldn't be too bad otherwise it's kind of tricky if you're if this is your first printer it also does not come with a slicer it does give instructions to use repertoire host I believe or something similar to that in the instruction booklet but if you have Cura or Simplify 3D, you should be fine with a pre-configured profile because it's not that hard to set up. So we have yet to test a CR10 out, but as far as we can tell from what we've read online, this printer is different from the CR10 with the, with the quick heat time of the heat bed. And the fact that it has a Titan extruder which they built. These two printers are often compared together since they're the two most well known large format home user 3 printer. As compared to like a Prisa or Monoplast which is a smaller desktop printer. This printer can support different materials. It says the Bowden extruder driver. We've tested out the PLA, which is the first one of course to test out. And we recently just tested out PET G film on it. Since we need to upgrade the Prisa to uh, MK2.5. And this is a printer that we've got, the only printer that we got can print PET G that big. So here's a quick video of that being printed. Okay, so here's the first attempt at printing with pet G on the Tevo Tornado. The base obviously not going to be the best, or the first radar is not going to be the best. But this is the first time printing on grass with pet G and it didn't really apply any more glue stick to the grass plate. So I'm going to see if I can get the stick bare to the grass, which it's kind of doing, but yeah. So right, you guys know how this turns out. At first we thought the pet G wasn't going to stick as well to the grass bed as it did, but it turned out to be a success. It's not the best first rider for the print, but it'll work. We hope to finalize the pet G profile settings and finish calibrating the grass bed more. Probably the biggest setback 
slash negative part of this printer is the grass bed calibration in our opinion which the instructions the instructions that was going how to calibrate the bed and it's kind of difficult to set up if it's your first printer like I said before but once you get the hang of it it should be fine I've also read some comments online that the control box is not really necessary which is true but it's not really a setback for this printer yes they could have mounted the fans and the power supply and the LCD onto the aluminum extrusion frame but it's not really necessary it doesn't take back from this printer or so we really need the workspace some of the positives about the printer is it's affordable it may not be a modern price like many price but it's not like an automaker or a higher end printer price it's in the maybe 250 to 450 dollar range depending on any holiday sales or discounts you may get and of course the size that it can print is another main part of this printer since you can print the very tall objects that most printers can't like the Prusa and the heat bed heat time heat heat up time for this printer is very good and quick so if you saw on 3 print and technology instagram a few months ago we did have one issue with this printer or is that some kind of bug I got caught in the control boxes fan and it stopped it for a while but you almost take it apart to get it out but it's all good now and the table support email website thing seemed very really responsive to the email we sent to them before so it supports good and that's really the only issue that we've had with the printer so far so if you get the print stick to the grass bed which you should be able to give them some time after you get all set up and stuff and calibrated this printer is very reliable we haven't really had any issues with it so the setup time for this printer bought a partially pre-assembled printer probably in about an hour if you know what you're doing it's mainly just putting those four bolts into the bottom of the y-axis and securing these axes to it and just in the grass bed and connect all the cables so setup time's pretty quick so this printer is, part, is good on the material usage we haven't used it a lot yet other than PLA and PETG I'm sure you can use it probably nylon or carbon fiber or some exotic filament the only main one we have concern with is if ABS you can of course probably print small ABS parts on it if you got the settings adjusted right but doing the big ones it's going to be hard to find an enclosure of the size or some, get a custom built one or find a very big storage container or such to fit it in I uh, wouldn't really recommend this as your day to day printer as you need something that can print in big scale or large format type objects since there's other options available like the Mod Price Select Mini or Prusa MK3 but if you really want to you can use it as a day to day printer the slicing, running the files onto it, setting up prints pretty simple like any other printer just this one takes up a lot more space and you can use that space for something else if you don't need a really big printer so in the hand on video we showed you the default settings for some modified 3D for this printer we'll show you a few, I'll show you a few more settings that have tweaked it a little bit and maybe go over the pet G profile settings that we found so so this is our first review of trying a new format out for these three printers. We're still working on the topics and content type flow of the video. So hopefully this goes pretty good. 
if there's anything that we missed or that you want to see but the print of many dimensions or specs or stuff like that just leave a comment down below and try to get that get that into the next print review video so here on simplified 3d you can see the build bottom of the printer so as I uh, mentioned earlier this printer is good for tall objects this is part of a cosplay Kingdom Hearts sword type object so if I was doing this on a regular printer like the Prusa or maybe even the Monoprice I would have these four objects that I'd print out individually but with this print like printer I can combine each object into one big one and print it out as one piece which is a benefit of having a really tall printer unfortunately I won't be able to show you it printed in this video because one it's going to take anywhere between 20 to 30 hours depending on in field radar hat and supports and two is I only have half a row of PLA left which I would need to order probably a row or two to finish this object but this gives you a good idea of the size of this printer so here's the custom settings that I have for Simplify 3D the only thing that I've already changed was the layer hat to 1500 or 0.15 In fuel, I reduced to 13%. And pretty much everything else has stayed the same. So I'll print something off with this settings and compare it with the default settings on Super 3D. To show you the diff, to show you the difference. Okay, so here on the left side is the number 5 3d default settings try to zoom in see if you can see the details it's really smooth and you can still see the lines a little bit and here on the right is the one that I changed on number 5 3d the lines the right height is a lot smaller than the one on the left there's not as much infill used either, but the main difference is the layer hat for now. So this one looks more ho, I suppose, but you can still see the layer hat. But those are the two prints in PLA off of this printer. If you like this video or want to see videos first, make sure you click subscribe. Let's see if we get to. 1,000 subscribers by 2019 but yeah so I'll see you guys next time